the last month, we've had a, a bunch of different data points, and each time we get a data point, we say we can't just look at that. String a couple of them together now for me in terms of the way you think Jay Powell now thinks about this. Well, I mean, b before getting to how Jay Powell thinks about it, you first got to sort of assess the economy. And I've been stringing them together, Andrew, and I string them together and find an economy that is pretty strong in the fourth quarter, certainly relative to the forecast. I was just actually thinking this morning about our Fed survey, which had the early folks calling for the recession to begin in the fourth quarter of 2022, which is this year. And I just don't see it. Uh, happening in the fourth quarter. Maybe, again, it's something uh, with the long and variable lags of monetary policy that happens next year. I mean, I think, I, I know Jay Powell's just a, a human being. You know, whatever you may think of him, he doesn't want the economy to go into recession, would love to be able to bring down inflation without a recession. And I think he sees the strength in the economy and says, I have cushion here to raise rates, fight inflation, and not create this recession. I think that's the way he looks at things. Rick, uh, I'm going to go back to Rick in a second, but I want to bring Lindsay and Stephanie into this. Lindsay, what's your take on these numbers? And, and if you could connect them to what we may hear uh, from these Fed minutes later today. Well, I think the data reinforces the idea that the economy is still on moderate footing. It was a surprisingly strong number in terms of business investment. That being said, when we look at that core component, that proxy for business investment, this stronger read follows last month's outright decline, the largest decline that we've seen since May of 2021. So we're still seeing a lot of volatility. A lot of businesses are cutting back, pulling back on investment, but they're doing so at a slightly slower clip than expected. So we are seeing this underlying decline in terms of momentum, but this ongoing monthly volatility at the same time. Turning to the labor market, the jobless claims data remains very volatile as well, still bouncing around in that tight range, not necessarily suggesting a further improvement in terms of layoff data, but not necessarily raising a red flag either. So this is pretty much the best case scenario for the Fed as they're looking at an economy that continues to point to the need for further rate increases. Remember, even with that cooling from top line price pressures, we're still talking about near four decade highs in terms of inflation, <clears throat> reinforcing right. the need again for the Fed to continue to raise rates, as the chairman said, above and beyond what the market was previously anticipating. The Fed has said much higher. The question right. is how much higher is that higher point? So, Steph, has this changed anything for you? And in terms of the way the equity, but look, you saw the, the, the Dow actually turned red on this news. You think good news would be good news, but maybe good news is bad news. I'm, I'm always of the belief that good news is good news. And these are good numbers today uh, in terms of durable goods, initial claims. I always look at the four-week moving average because the week-to-week -week numbers are so volatile. And the four-week moving average is about down 29% year over year in initial claims. So that's a, that's, a really, that's a really healthy number, even though it's higher than expected. But it's not just durable goods. It's not just jobs. Retail sales came in better than expected. Auto sales, you're almost at a 15 million annualized yep. SAR for auto sales, right? So, so the, there's a lot of momentum in the economy still, right? And I get that there are lag impacts from the Fed increasing rates, and we're not going to feel that until 2023. But perhaps maybe we have enough momentum that we can kind of handle some of these rate increases. And I would just point out the Atlanta Fed GDP now is at 4.1 percent for the fourth quarter in GDP. Maybe that comes down to three, even if it's two. It's better than what, the, what a lot of people are expecting. Um, it's going and, up today. Um, a lot of negative rhetoric.